Hi, I'm Pierre, brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. This week it is layered connectivity. Yes. Lady Ada, what is this week's new product introduction? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so this week, it's actually kind of a collaboration. Uh, this week it's the Sarah NX040, which is a, a combination of the NXP SR040, which we'll talk about, and you know our favorite, the Nordic NRF series, the NRF52. This is the 833, which is actually more recent than the 840, I believe. Um, there's a USB capable uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, Cortex M33 or M4 microcontroller. Sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, with, of course, with BLE and the ultra low power um, and great range capabilities and programmability of the Nordic series, uh, teamed up as that's the main core, teamed up with the NXP SR040, which is an ultra wide band uh, radio front end. Uh, that can also do like um we'll talk about it like various positioning and then layered connectivity put this all together in a certified ready to pick in place antenna fi'd module so you can get started with ultra wideband projects really quickly okay so ultra wideband what is that well it's like it's like those pants from jnco right they're like ultra wide leg these are ultra wide band this is a radio system that um, blasts data over, you'll see like, you know, like a gigahertz wide bandwidth, um, and it can transmit and receive data. And it, it doesn't, it's not the same as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which is like 2.4 gigahertz. And it's not LoRa, which is usually like 90, 900 megahertz, or maybe 433. It's much higher frequency. So it's very near, uh, very, uh, short distances. You guys get to hear it three times. Um, okay. Uh, switching with ultra wideband specifically for, uh, doing small scale location, because, um, if you want to do geolocation with GPS or you want to do cellular, um, uh, triangulation with like cell towers, you have to be outdoors. You have to have network access or you have to have a GPS fix. You have to have like good connectivity to the sky or whatever. And you can also get 10 meters best range. You can also do Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy time of flight detection. Um, that'll get you a little bit better, but it's still going to be like within a meter or two. Um, also, usually you can't tell which direction. You can just tell like overall distance, like, oh, it is, you're, you know, 10 meters away or 20 meters away, but you don't know exactly where within a 3D space um, the target is. And then with ultra wideband, what's really neat is, especially if you have multiple anchor tags, you can actually do centimeter level indoor positioning um where like within an indoor space where you don't necessarily have you can be in a basement you can be in a tower whatever or you can do it outside of course but uh specifically indoors it's great um you set up multiple anchor tags and you can detect where in 3d space objects are within that space and this ultra wideband is one of the few technologies that can actually do that kind of uh positioning that kind of precision indoors okay um, so it does this, you know, basically by sending data, um, and then looking for the bounce to apply, kind of like anything else, like time of flight or, um, distance, uh, detection with other RF signals. So that's not unusual. Um, but what's nice is because it's ultra wideband, it's got this extra bandwidth because it's a high frequency. It can actually do a little bit more security. So instead of just sending like a random ping, it can do, uh, like challenge responses or, um, encryption, um, and have packet data that's a little bit more complicated than just like a simple like you know uh echo ping or advertisement like in bluetooth low energy uh which means it can be more secure and so i actually did a little bit of reading about like how ultra wide you know bandwidth with the ultra wide bandwidth uh location works and um, what's neat is the data is sent and it's like this beautiful sync pulse and the pulse shape is like uh tune in a way so that you get um no frequency outside the band so yes it does use this ultra wide band but the energy level overall is quite low because it's spread out over this wide frequency and because you have this wide frequency um and you can detect you know pulses in the different parts of the the frequency band that you're transmitting in if you do have bounces or you have something that is opaque or transparent to a certain frequency other frequencies might be able to get around it or through it and so Part of the calculation you have to do with um, ultra wideband is managing the reflections because you're going to get like a direct path bounce, but then you might get reflective bounces. And then you have to do the math to figure out like, okay, well, based on the frequency and which pulse and the data, like what is the actual distance and where are you with relation to 
you know, the other uh, ultra wideband module that's like transmitting or receiving the pulses. Um, and that's what's really nice about the NX040 is it does that all for you. So you don't have to do the math and calculate and figure out like, you know, all this, the correlation of all the symbols and data that you're getting. Um, once you've synced it up with the transmitter, so it all has like the same security key, it'll just tell you like magically like, hey, here you are with X, Y, Z coordinates. Okay, um, there's basically two ways you might want to use ultra wideband. There's the single sided. So this is one to one and you have um, you know, a transmitter, say your car and a receiver that could be like a key fob or a phone in your pocket. And this doesn't do um, very detailed triangulation. Like it can usually, you know, it can definitely do distance and it can usually do like basic direction. You're going to get like maybe X, Y, and probably not going to get X, Y, Z coordinates, but it's good for detecting when somebody is nearby and how close they are. And then there is the more advanced difference of arrival. Uh, calculations and a lot of people when they talk about ultra wideband this is what they mean you would set up anchor points in this case in the bottom left you see like a one two three and four and those are transmitters or receivers that are looking for signal coming from that cell phone that's kind of wandering around the 3d space and by taking those four bounces of the signal it can calculate where in 3d space that cell phone is and so this would be good if you're like oh i have a you know event space and i want to track where people are within that event space or i have assets within a factory i want to know where that asset is um this is where you would use a time difference of arrival so two different use cases um the previous one tends to be used for like detecting when somebody is nearby for like security purposes you want to unlock something because it's like oh you've been authenticated and you're nearby um this is like a nice comparison from nxp showing um the accuracy uh you know they don't even show gps or cellular but that's also in the range of seven to ten meters um but ultra wideband one of the nice things because of that high frequency wad bandwidth um and the the high bandwidth of data and the smallness of the waveform you can do much better uh, time of flight um, detection um so you know originally it was for item tracking but what's interesting is um the new use kit you know and, and indoor navigation but uh some new use cases that are coming in are built smart building services so detecting when a person is at the door automatically unlocks or hands-free payments you don't even have to touch to take your phone out and touch to pay it just knows that you you know you're walking by and you're authenticated already uh so you know like we're talking about how in New York City that when you want to go through the turnstile, you have to put your phone on the tap to pay to go through. But wouldn't it be cool if you just walked the turnstile and it was like, hey, I can detect that you have an ultra wideband capable phone. It's, you know, you're within four centimeters. I know that means you're within the turnstile. I'm going to let you through. Um, so car access is seems to be another uh, technology that's picking up ultra wideband, especially as cell phones. Um, are starting to add ultra wideband technology because people tend to have their cell phones and may not have their car keys. And what's nice is that ultra wideband isn't susceptible to the relay attacks that have been like really like a plague on cars. Um, this is like a kind of a famous clip of of somebody who was caught. They put an antenna near the home and they 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 amplify the signal from the key fob that might be next be left near the door or near a um the window and they use that to unlock the uh car so ultra wideband doesn't have this issue because it isn't this simple um transmitter receiver it, it can actually do authentication within the ultra wideband frequency so inside each module you get the nxp sro 40 that's the ultra wideband connected over spi to the nordic nrf 52 that's the main core that you're going to be working with it also has Bluetooth low energy which means there's this you know backhaul uh because it, ultra wideband even though it has bandwidth you can't communicate back to like a phone or a computer so the the nordic nr52 833 is what you would use to connect a computer a cell phone um, or other devices because it has full bluetooth full energy capability and of course all the peripherals you need um so nxp has documentation on their trimension it's kind of a cool name the sr040 um, ultra wideband but what's great is you know again all the calculations are done in chip communicate over SPI so you don't have to do that work on the Bluetooth or energy device. You do it on this chip and communicate over SPI. There's two versions of this module. This one has two antenna ports. So you would use a you know, it's normal 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth antenna. For ultra wideband, you'll want to pick up 
you know, Laird has the matching nano uh, wideband antenna, which, you know, I'm assuming when they do the authentication, uh, authentication, the certification for the chips, they use this antenna, so you get to use their certifications. Um, but check out the documentation for that to make sure. But you plug in this antenna, now you can, even if you're in an enclosure or you want to have a better range uh, for the ultra wideband, because one of the trade-offs is ultra wideband, because it's a high frequency, doesn't have as much range as you're going to get with 900 megahertz or 433, of course. Um, both modules are pick and placeable. Uh, you know, the one that has an antenna, just make sure, you know, you really want to make sure that you have nothing in that area that could get in the way of the antenna. It's really important that the ultra wideband antenna is like free and clear because, you know, any interference in the antenna is going to affect how good it is at doing the, um, uh, 3d location of devices or the, the time of flight detection of, um, distances between it and you know, the other paired device. There's also a dev kit available, which I kind of like, uh, has everything you need. It's got a little microbytes connector. Um, it's got quick STEM QT compatible. So you can plug in, uh, any of your Adafruit favorite sensors or devices. You want an OLED or temperature sensor, go to town. Uh, you'll need, of course, more than one of these. You'll need at least two. They also have a USB dongle. I forgot to mention. So if you want to get data on your computer, um, the USB dongle will be able to let you run their eval software to get data from the ultra wideband device without going through like cell phone it does the bluetooth to usb conversion for you and best of all it's in stock thank you for being patient through that uh i api um someone in the chat said there was a giant internet outage across the entire internet right now which it seemed to be true because i was like what's going on yeah but did we give up no, we're not going to give up. Um, probably want to skip that video, by the way. So yep. we'll, um, that's this week's on MPI. All right. Thanks. Thanks for hanging in there. All right. On MPI.